gentlemen it's friday night at 8 p.m please give it up for your host lana Giovanici. hi everyone lana here it's great to be back uh from my little stint uh at the holiday inn you know what i mean yeah hi yeah really a great show for you tonight we've got three great guests uh, with very different backgrounds, and they are going to be dispensing advice from you, our viewers. Uh, we asked you to tune in and uh, put on some uh, uh, questions for us to answer. And they're very, very deep, and some not so deep. So let's get started. Um, can we get our our uh, our first uh, first guest, please, uh, Mr. Edgar? Jay Culliver. There he is. There he is. Welcome to the show. Welcome to my show. Welcome back to my show. Well, thank you. Great. Uh, super. We'll uh, 
Any anything you need to say or get out uh, right now? My name's Edgar, and I am a high quality refrigeration repair man. And my motto in life is: if you can't fix it, just leave it alone. Great. That's Thank awesome. You. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we also have with us a, a wonderful uh, and very uh, sketchy past uh, with um, one of my dear friends who I met in a county jail cell once. Um, please welcome to the stage, Daniello Singer Rendezvous. Yes. Hello there. Hi, it's good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I am Daniela Singer Rendezvous. And I just want you to know about my school, which is Daniela Singer Rendezvous Academy for Exceptional Young Ladies. Mm. And I want to share with you my motto. And my motto. Well, I have two. One is, one is breathe. And the other is, let your excellence shine through like a diamond that you are. <laughs> Unless you're in the county pen. Hey, uh, great to have you here, Daniela. Um, also, um, we have a very interesting guest who uh, is uh, not uh, so welcome to the show, but I didn't really have a say in it because the producer thought it would be really good for me to have my nemesis uh, with us here. And it is Rayburn Bonsagel. Come on stage, or well, come on to the talk. Oh, what's up everybody? Rayburn Bonsagel here. Here, got my own talk show, uh, all about all about sports. Thank you for having me on your talk show. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. I'm excited to be here. Are you excited to be here? Oh, I'm, I guess that's your job. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thanks so much, Rayburn, for trying to tell me how to do my job. Well, anyway, let's just move right along and uh, get to our questions from you, our viewers. Um, so I'm just going to ask each person to give advice because you guys really need a lot of help. Great, so our first question, um, I'm gonna get this, uh, we'll start off with Edgar here. Uh, how to get motivated to clean the house and do yard work? How, what, is, what is your advice for, for getting to that stuff? Well, that's uh, probably the most frequent question I get in my profession, and uh, I'm really excited to answer this. Um, for me, it's all about the smell. Uh, you open up a refrigerator, you get that 13-day-old meatloaf in there from the back of the fridge behind the peanut butter that doesn't belong in there, and you say to yourself, self, that really stinks. Yes, smelly, smelly things. That'll, that'll motivate anyone. Right, Rayburn? Anyway, um, for you, uh, Daniela, what, what was your what is your advice? You know, you've seen some things, and you're kind of a bad girl, but you're yes, opening your yes. school. Well, I'm reformed bad girl, you know. Mm -hmm. I, it's when you can, but if you find yourself in a tight spot, like in the county jail, like I once was, then With don't. This. Yes, ma'am. Don't use your toothbrush or your cellmate's toothbrush to clean the baseboards. Good to know, good to know. Yes, uh, that was a point of contention with us, I believe, in the, <laughs> in the county yeah. pen. Oh, Rayburn. I'm sorry. That's all right, I've forgiven you. Rayburn, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, question well I'm like unlike uh, our semi uh, formidable host uh, on uh, on my talk show we actually have a live audience so sometimes uh, we get our fair share of trash walking in people who wear, wear hats people with bad mustaches we just knock them on the head drag them on out that's how I take it out <laughs> well we have a new a different version and a definition of of trash and cleaning things up for sure. 
Well, let's move on to the next viewer question, shall we? Um, sure. This one is veterinarianly in its its context. Is um, we love to know your advice on how you get a dog to pee in a cup without making him or her neurotic and out of their head. Edgar. Well, uh, actually, this is one of the most important questions I get in my line of work here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm actually really excited to answer this question. Um, the, the way you do it is by putting the dog in the fridge. Now, it's got nowhere to go. Now, you just put a bunch of cups in there. And well, you will with supervision and uh, throw some treats in there as well. It'll, it'll make them feel real good. Oh, okay. So yeah, just put it in the refrigerator. Is this a working refrigerator? Well, it's up to you. Great. Good to know. You have a choice. Super. All right. Uh, and you, uh, Daniela, uh, what is your advice for getting a dog to be in a cup without making it, uh, him or her neurotic? The dog, that is. Right, okay. right. Well, most of my experiences with young ladies, and I find that most things that you do with young ladies can transfer well to dogs training. And so I would say if you choose a large receptacle, so like a big gulp sized cup, I think that you will give the dog a better chance of getting the pee inside the cup. And I found that with young women, and especially with dogs, I'm sure that um, if you have a bigger receptacle that it will be easier and they will not be as worried about getting a mess on the floor. Sure, because that is what dogs think about. I'm, I'm with you on that one, Daniela. Ooh, yes, and well, well trained dogs, of course. Yes, well, exactly. Well, Rayburn, would you like to weigh in on this? Uh, big cup, squeeze them real tight, uh, put a camera on them, that always helps me. Uh, I know you know what I'm talking about, right? That's horrific. Anyway, um, I think we have uh, maybe time for uh, one or two more. Um, we'll do, um, here we go. Um, this one you can elaborate, but the, next, this, the last question will just have one, one small word answers. Um, here we go. This is really deep and philosophical. If the world is really round, why is a person who can balance on a big bowl considered clever? Actually, this is one of the most important questions I get in my line of work, and I'm real excited to answer this question. Now, the earth is, is round, and a refrigerator mm -hmm. is rectangle. So that person is considered clever because the pole is most likely smaller than the person uh, in the same way that ice cubes fit in a tray in a perfect isosceles triangle. Wow, that's so deep. I can't even uh, reiterate what you just said. Great. Daniela, how about you? Um, what are your thoughts on this? Well, you know that women haven't always been valued for their cleverness or intelligence. Maybe in the recent last 200, maybe 100 years, we have been given more equal rights. And I feel that as a, a woman can do many things with her body, that being able to dance on a ball is just one of the many things that we can value for ourselves as women and uh, as, as exceptional ladies of distinction. So balancing on balls is one of our minors at the academy. That's a whole minor. Yes, I'll check, ma I'll check that out in night school. All right, yes. Rayburn, I'm sure you have some sort of pretentious take on this. Go ahead. Well, I mean, uh, you're not clever if you balance on the ball yourself. That's why you got a couple of stunt doubles to do it for you. I got three or four uh, folks look just like me, run my talk show when I'm tired. They balance on balls. They're the idiots who are risking their necks, not me. Fascinating. Those poor people look like you. Mm. All right, finally, just got one last question. Um, what, if you could uh, sum it up in just a few words, just not a bunch of sentences, just a few words, one sentence, 
give us your outlook on life, your motto, your mantra, your whatever. Go ahead, Edgar. If you can't use duct tape to repair, then just leave it there. So true, so true. And Daniela, your I think I know what you're going to say, but I'm going to let you say it because, because you're you. Just to sum it up, be exceptional each and every day. Be exceptional. So easy And don't to go do. to jail. <laughs> Sometimes you can't help it. <laughs> we'll get into that later. And of course, Rayburn, what is your motto? I can't wait to hear this crap. Burn, burn bright, burn bright and hot and quick. Uh, light yourself on fire, literally, and put a camera on it and send it to my show. <laughs> well, it looks like that's all the time we have. Thank you to my guests, uh, whose names I have just blanked on, Edgar, Daniela, and Rayburn. Uh, so uh, great to have you. Um, I, I think uh, I probably won't be able to do this show anymore from my uh, palatial estate here in uh, Broward County, uh, Florida. All right, well, thanks so much for joining in. Super appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned for the dating game coming up right after me. And a round of applause for all of our players. That was great. Hey, everybody, it's B. Hi. And G. This is the B and G show, but as you may have noticed, we got some friends with us tonight, and we are yeah. so excited that yeah. you are joining us for this first ever B and G and Friends improv show. Now, before yeah. we get into all the good, awesome details about uh, what's going to happen and who these people are, I need you guys to start commenting with some suggestions for us. We've got a lot of uh, a lot of fun stuff coming up tonight. Two more games, mm -hmm. and we're going to need your suggestions to make those games happen. So get your fingers ready because I'm going to need you guys to comment <laughs> with three different suggestions. The first suggestion that I'm going to need from you guys is something, uh, a, a physical or extreme profession or job, something that is a little beyond the ordinary, but could happen in real life. The second suggestion that I need from you is an object or an animal, something that someone could transform into. And then the third suggestion that I need from you guys is a fictional character from your childhood. This can be a literary character, a cartoon character, whatever you want, something that makes you think of your childhood though. All right, and while you guys are commenting, Laurel, you wanna introduce them to those amazing players that we just had on our show? I sure would. Um, I guess I can do a shout out. Uh, so I teach uh, over at Playhouse on the Square, not right now, uh, but I did. And so these are uh, some folks who uh, are very inspirational. They are students and um, have been meeting uh, once, sometimes twice a week uh, since we all had to go inside in our, in our homes and stuff. So uh, super honored to have been able to teach them a little bit of stuff. I don't know. Maybe they pick some stuff up off the street. But um, for our, our our Edgar character, that was EJ Caruso. So if you are sitting in your yeah, come on, come on stage, yeah. Uh, so if you're friends with EJ, you need to be sitting in your living room and cheering uh, right now. Uh, I hear it. It's good. Okay, good. Um, our uh, second guest, Daniela was played by the lovely and talented Donna Satterley Ross. Everyone give it up for, for Donna, yay, awesome. Um, a sassy redhead. And um, so uh, the uh, third guest, uh, Rayburn, uh, whose name, uh, last name, I don't even know what I said. Um, that was played by the also lovely and talented Robert Burns. Um, show your face, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so, so cheer in your living room right now for Robert Burns. Let me hear you. Awesome. Yes, awesome. So uh, thank you guys so much. You're so, so sweet. And I feel like a big dummy because I probably would not have uh, done any weekly things because uh, I'm lazy. Aha! Okay, great. So 
Sorry. We're so okay. glad to have you guys on the show. So yeah. tonight, you guys have already seen the talk show where we got your advice. Thank you again for commenting yes, with your suggestions you. before the show. They were awesome. Next up, we're going to be doing a dating game. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, but first, I still want to encourage you, get those comments in, get those suggestions in. Extreme job transforming into a whatever, an object or an animal, and then a childhood character. So get those comments in on this mainstream. That's where we're going to see it. If you're commenting on yeah. somebody else's video, we might not see it. So click on the original, get your comments in. We want to use your suggestion. The mm -hmm. dating game. Some of you may be familiar with this game. Some of you may not. It's pretty popular amongst the improv world. Uh, what's going to happen is I will be hosting the game. Uh, EJ is going to be our contestant who is going to be picking one of our three other contestants to go on a date with and he's each super of them, duper desperate let's just say that right now. yes uh and the three of them are going to have some interesting quirks that he is then going to have to try and figure out while asking them only three questions he has three questions to figure out the three quirks it's gonna be a lot of fun okay i think we've got all of our suggestions in so what i need to do before i can give our contestants their quirks ej come on the screen please ej is he there there, there you is. are. All right. Now, EJ, because I want the audience to know that you're an upstanding guy and that you're an honest kind of dude, I want you to hold up your hand. I want you to solemnly swear that when I ask you to, you're going to turn off your video, turn off your audio so you can't see or hear anything that we are see saying and you can't cheat. Got it? Got it. All right. So, EJ, you're going to go away. Everybody say bye bye, EJ. All right, there he goes. Now, I'm going to need on the screen tonight, Amy, Donna, and Ben. I hope I'm going to go already. All right, so I'm going to go. Oh, Laurel, yeah, you go, you go hang out. You just watch. You can just enjoy this and watch it. Hey. Anybody see Ben? Where is he? Where is that funny little bunny? Benjamin. I need you to let me. Oh, I took away his camera privileges. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Now you should be able to. While he's getting that settled, uh, Amy, you're going to be contestant number one, and you are a skyscraper roofer. You put the roofs on skyscrapers. <laughs> Big job. Donna, you're going to be contestant number two, and during the course of this game, you are transforming into an anteater. Cool, awesome. And Ben, you were contestant number three. You are everybody's childhood favorite, Winnie the Pooh. Wonderful. Got it? Everybody got their suggestions? Audience, you ready to go? I think we're ready to go. All right, let's bring EJ back. So everybody give a thumbs up in the camera. Thumbs up at the camera. Let EJ know it's good to come back. It's good to come back. Yes. It's good to come back. Come on, EJ. Come on back, EJ. Hey, all right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. All the way from Malibu, California. We're so excited to bring you Netflix's newest dating show, Hot Hollywood Hookups. And our uh, main man here, uh, Mr. Eddie Can't Get Enough. How are you doing, Eddie? <laughs> Hi, how are you? Oh, we're doing great. Thank you, Eddie. All right, now, Eddie, we've got three amazing hotties for you to <laughs> hook up with. If you can figure out what's so special about them and then pick one of them. How's that sound? That sounds stupendous. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, Eddie, you get three questions for all three contestants. So why don't you start with your first question? <laughs> okay. I was never really allowed to ask this to a lady before, but I think I'm going to try it. Uh, if you were in bed with me and I rolled over on top of you, how would you respond? <laughs> Valid question, contestant number one. Well, uh, I would be very excited. Uh, I'd be a little worried though about, you know, being on a, a high area that you may fall. Uh, so we'd have to take some precautions, maybe, you know, tie you in. 
Hey, oh, yeah. All right. Contestant number two. I would probably uh, stick my snout somewhere, um, uh, somewhere, somewhere where I could get the things that I really like from you. These ladies are straight up front, Eddie. What am I saying? <laughs> hubba hubba. <laughs> All right, contestant number three, same question. Oh, bother. Well, we won't bother him anymore. Eddie, what's your second question for our contestants? Well, my second question is, if you could be anywhere in the world right now, where would you be? Oh, contestant number one. I would be on top of it. Oh, I love being on top of the world, high up, on top, on top. Mm -hmm. Con contestant number two. I would be somewhere where there was lots of, of open ground and maybe where little children leave tasty treats to attract my best friends. And contestant number three. Oh, I think I would be um, maybe exploring the woods with my little friends and maybe stumbling upon all my friends. Some of them are wise and some of them are sad and some of them are wild. But a journey it will be. Well, sociable, aren't we? Okay, Eddie, you get one last question. Okay, uh, my last question is uh, what I often get asked. Uh, why are you so weird? Contestant number one. Well, that's funny because I get asked that as well. I tend to like high places and I like fixing things. And so I think the combination of the two, the lack of oxygen and the, the constant fixing and laying things flat, you know, sometimes I think, yeah, I'm just not, um, you know, there, I'm just high up. Mm -hmm. Wow, all right then, contestant. Intriguing. Uh, contestant number two. Are you with oh, us? Yes, they're just, I just love these little, oh, they're so small and they're so delicious and I, I just can't get enough. Just like I just can't get enough of you, E. Mm, you're so delicious. I love this. Mm. Wow. I can't wait to stick my snout in this pile. Uh, okay, get to number three. Um, well, I like to eat and I'm very fluffy. Nothing really bothers me too much, uh, except when my friends aren't around, that's kind of a bother, but I also am okay being alone. What are you doing later? Oh, all right. Well, Eddie, you've had your three questions. Can you tell us which of these three lucky contestants you are going to hook up with? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, uh, I will skip past uh, contestant number one because, I mean, she's just way too far away for me. Uh, um, she, she may be an astronautical kind of person, maybe work, maybe working off in the uh, in the Everlands in the, in space. Close. She's not quite out of the stratosphere. She's here on Earth. Yeah. In an air, air pilot. No, she keeps her feet planted on things connected to the ground. He is so. Does she work up high in the air, fixing things? She does, she does. Uh, contestant number one, would you consider yourself a city or a country girl? 
You know, I'm both. I just go where the houses need me to go. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe a, a electrician. Oh, higher up. Higher up. Holds the so water I, away I'm from connected, them. and she is really on the roof of the house. Yes, she is a roofer. Specifically, she specializes in skyscraper roofs, which are a new thing. It's amazing. Yeah. All right, right but we're, we're not being contested one. Um, uh, contestant number two is really not up my alley either because she seems like a, a dirty animal, mm. uh, maybe a pig. Not quite. A little more exotic. A more exotic ant eater. Oh, boom, boom, boom. Yes, Eddie, you got it. I'm surprised you're not attracted to that snout action, but you know what? That's okay. Each his own. So contestant number three. I think I choose contestant number three because I'm often very depressed and lonely myself. And it would be really, really incredible to to spend time with somebody like Eeyore. Oh, so close. Right Piglet. neighborhood. Piglet. Not quite. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh, yes. All right, well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching another episode of Hot Hollywood Hookups. Round of applause. <laughs> Um, all right, Laurel, before I introduce our new players that joined us for that second game, do you want to go ahead and start getting suggestions for our final game? Yeah. Hey, people, give us suggestions for our next game. Here's what we need. I have to cheat with my sheet. <laughs> um, I, I need you guys to just... Uh, provide us a, a, a city that you think is kind of loserville um, not Louisville but just it's a it's a city that's just you've been there and you're like oh, unimpressed um, and also uh, give us an object that is uh, maybe in your junk drawer or in your desk drawer at work and uh, just know that we will not be using the word dildo uh, if you thought that was funny, I'm sad to tell you it's not. Um, it just isn't. So be creative. Uh, be real. What's in your friggin' desk drawer or your friggin' junk drawer? Because that's where all, all right. the interesting stuff is. So, yeah. It is. Um, while you guys are commenting with that, let me get on the screen. Uh, Miss Amy! Where'd she go? Hey, Amy! Okay. Amy was contestant number one, the skyscraper roofer. Uh, round of applause. Awesome job, Amy. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And then can I get Ben Pierce on the screen? This is Ben, everybody. Ben was the adorable Winnie the Pooh, contestant number three. Ben, thank you so much for joining tonight. Round of applause for Ben. Thank and you. you guys uh, met, but please feel free to join us on the screen, both EJ and Donna. EJ was our awesome contestant that was guessing everybody. And Donna was contestant number two or the very accurately acted out anteater. Yeah. Well done, Donna and EJ. Yeah. Great job, okay. great job. Ow. Ow. Um, yeah, I am not, uh, oh, uh, one, I have, uh, let, I'll just type this into the, the chat room as well. Um, we did get our two suggestions, the city and an object. They are in oh, the... Chat. The chat room. Oh, okay, great. Um, super. Uh, I I'm also doing a la a watch party on my own page, and someone uh, provided one, uh, which uh, if we can just ham fist a staple remover in there somehow, that'd be great. All right. So um, here are the two suggestions that we have. Um, the city in which this art museum is uh, is located is Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, I uh, yeah, I was there. So I'm wondering if this is someone I know. And uh, the thing that is in their desk drawer or their junk drawer is some chapstick. Probably the, get, the flesh colored kind. Yes. Yeah. Can we get on the screen now? 
Robert Burns and Kennison Kyle, please. Now you guys haven't met Kennison yet, but he's nope. an amazing improv artist. He's here with us tonight. We're so happy to have him here. Laurel and I are actually going to be taking a back seat in this game. And Robert and Kennison are going to be your lovely art museum hosts. So, gentlemen, are you ready? Oh, yeah. We are ready. Perfect. Well, Super. have fun, you two. And then we'll be back at the end. Yes. Thanks, we'll Jilly. Thanks, Laurel. So, welcome to the Art Museum, folks. Robert and I are your art critics tonight. This museum is in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and our artist influence is Chapstick. So, Robert, tell them what they're going to see. So basically, each person's going to take turns turning on their screen, and that's going to kind of simulate the pieces that we'll be looking at, and we're going to kind of be critiquing and judging and commenting on. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, folks, you got it? Thumbs up? Okay, I can't see you, but I trust you. Your host for the art tour will be right back. Rosie, Hello. Rosie, where are you? Oh, it's, there you are, it's Rosie. Me. It's me, Cal Calip, sir. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, I'm Rosie, so Rosie. It's so good to see you. It's so so very good to see you. It's been many since high school, was it? High school. I mean, I've I've stalked you all across the social media, but it's very good to finally see you. We we, we were best friends. Whatever happened, we can get into that later. Yeah, we got we got we got art to look at, Rosie. We do. We got to, we we got some art to look at, Rosie. That's right. We have some fer ferocious blogging to do. Um, that too. That too. All right. Uh, where are so, we off to? Where are we off to this week? Today we're we are uh, browsing um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we are going to be uh, seeing their chapstick period, a very important period for Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's kind of whenever oh, they're trying. Oh my. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's when they were trying to really soothe the city, take smooth out all the rough edges. Didn't famously didn't work, but we're gonna see. Oh, there, there's still potholes there. Oh, there's a lot of potholes. Yes, metaphorical and physical. Um, so, chapstick doesn't work on power potholes. No, it sure does not. It, sure it makes does. great art. It makes beautiful art. Okay. So um, first up, uh, I would love to see um, a piece by somebody who I have been following nonstop. I cannot wait to see. Um, Bonaparte Petillier, uh, I believe, submitted this piece uh, uh, pretty recently, although I, I heard he spent 14 years on it. And he is, how old is he? Six, 16, 17? 17. 17. 17. That's what, the, that's what the Wikipedia said was 17. So I, a young artist, he started to, he started this piece at three. <laughs> oh, at th at three. how amazing for a young artist. <laughs> Whimsy. So we know oh. we can see the, the rubber band always just like, it wants to snap Tulsa back just to like where it was. But the thing is, is where it was, was never really that great. So nobody really knows what that means. <laughs> that, that's, that's true. Now, I've, I've, I've met Bonaparte once. He was about six mm -hmm. and he was living in uh, Idabel, Oklahoma then. So maybe Tulsa was the, was the place, so. But uh, so he wanted to get back there. Uh, I love his use of the rose. It's mm. a throwback to the roaring 20s mm -hmm. of 1900 and all the beautiful ladies that worked in Tulsa. So it's, a, yeah. it, it's not a Texas rose, it's a Tulsa rose. It's a Tulsa rose, yes. And he does, Tulsa rose. he does believe in reincarnation. He believes that he was among among the the disrupt, disreputable folk of the Roaring Twenties, um, going into all of the speakeasies and picking all of the roses from all of the all of the women's hair, um, he just wanted to bring it in, bring it in full circle. Yeah. All right. Well, 
That's enough of Bonaparte's piece right now. There, we could spend two hours now, Rosie. We That's could true. Spend two hours. It's true. But we don't have that much time. These fine folks want to see more chapstick art. Absolutely. All right. Our next, our next artist that submitted to this uh, is none other than Andrew Fuddlebottom. Oh, <laughs> oh, a Fuddlebottom. <laughs> No, it's one of your favorites, Rosie. One of your favorites. In high school, you had two pieces in your locker. Drew, I, I, I gave I, you one for prom. That that is that is very true. I did at one point. Uh, I I needed this piece so much that I took it, and I I I. I was furious. It, it, it made me feel so much. I couldn't handle it. I tore it in half. I put it in two pieces in my locker. It was found again, taped back together, and placed in this beautiful museum. This honestly seems like a conflict of interest, the fact that I'm here. I, I, I really can't. Rosie, I have to say, while it might seem like a conflict of interest, I knew your love for this piece when I gave it to you. Now, like you said, it's been ripped. And you can see that they use that new that new wa wa wash washi tape washabi tape. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. remember how to say it right, but mm -hmm. they use that washabi tape with all the decor right up in the middle, covered up the <laughs> lips so you can't see the bright chapstick uh, That's used. Right. That's right. You gave it to me. Uh, you saw the feathers of this piece, and you you just knew what it would mean to me. All the all the the birds that have flown into my windows whenever at my at my summer home in Tulsa. <laughs> It really brings me back to those, those, those trying times. They were trying times, but now, folks, we do want you to know that Rosie, Ro Rosie cares about the environment. All those feathers are in a down comforter on Rosie's bed. So feathers went to good use. Birds called, didn't die in vain. It's, it's called upcycling. It's upcycling. <laughs> All right. So. We, again, I know mm -hmm. you could spend hours. Mm -hmm. Tears of joy, tears of joy, tears of joy. Yes. Uh, I, okay. I, we have to move on. I, I, I really have, we do. Can't. We got to move on. This, who's who's going to be next for us, Rosie? Now, this person I know has, has had a lot of personal relationship um, with you throughout throughout the decades on again off again yes that's right that's right we have emilia cauliflower were here um one of her famous pieces um doesn't that just get you doesn't that just doesn't that just make you want to want to believe again so much hope i'm, I'm i remember me, I'm, I remember Cal Calypser. Me. I remember how to hope. Me. Me. <laughs> was describe. I, I overwhelmed. Describe, please. Uh, at this point, I, I think we are being set up here. I believe this was just personally, these pieces were chosen to attack our sensibilities. I don't know. I don't know. We have, we have the catch up here, just symbolizing Calypser's own own heart just squeezed into oblivion and we have the, the this what happened we, when we parted ways rosie my heart was squeezed we have the walmart bag all those all those shameful nights in the walmart parking lot that's for you can tell those stories this is an r-rated not an x-rated show that's true that's true it's it is not my place a gentleman a gentleman never tells that's true <laughs> We have the electric cord, uh, electrical cord bound up like a mummy in, in, in silent protest of all the, all the horrific things that old cauliflower has seen both in and outside of your relationship, which again, not touching that one. <laughs> no, the, 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 the that's, that's our thing, Rosie. Cauliflower's our thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, got the vapors. Oh. Okay. Feeling better, Rosie. Thank you. Oh. Warms Calypso's heart. Thank mm. you. Thank you. 
Well, all right. We, I believe we one more piece. One more. One more. And that would be none other than Don Ye Sal. Are you kidding me? Don Ye Sal. Are you kidding just me? Just uses the first two names. Doesn't go by the last name. Just Don Ye Sal. Oh. Oh, if there was one, if there was one piece that really embodied what it meant to be chapstick in Tulsa, <laughs> it would be this piece. Oh. We, have, we have the mask. We have the mask that just soothes and cools the the volcano, the volcan volcanus, volcanoous, volcanic, volcanus, the, vo the volcanus nightmare that is the face, just smoothed over, like like it was never there, just like the potholes in our fair city. <laughs> that's that's true. That is true. Now the unique part in this piece mm -hmm. is the lips, the chapstick container in the left hand. You might want to pin the picture so that you can see it up close, make it a little bigger. Get out your magnifying glasses, folks. Get out your magnifying glasses. <laughs> well, get your face very close. This, this is, this, <clears throat> you've got to be careful here, but this is the prototype for the original chapstick container. <laughs> That's true. Uh, you, you you would not you would not even believe it. No. But they wanted to sell. At one point, it was proven that chapstick was as addictive as nicotine, as tobacco. This was going to be their Surgeon General's chapstick label. This is a true story. I would have never. I would never pick up another 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 chapstick again. Another nope. tube. No. Nope. That were the case. No. Nope. Oh. And we have. Oh boy. It's just too much, it's, honestly. It's heart wrenching. Satan, I'm amazed, Rosie, that our town of Tulsa, <laughs> not greatly known for its cultural, good lord, no, being, <laughs> done such an amazing job with this chapstick collection. They have done such a real job. A they did. A job. They did a job. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm impressed and soothed and my spirit has been both ripped out of me, calmed, and then reverse sucked back into my body organs. Couldn't say it better, Rosie. Oh, you, read my, you, you, you read my soul describing that. Oh, Rosie. That Oh, it's so good to reconnect. It is. See you again in 15 years. Can we make that 15 days? Um, I, I, I got something for you. It sounds ominous. I'm terrified and very Don't excited. Be. I'm Don't amorous. Be. It's I, amorous. Uh, amorous? It's amorous. I am amorous. You are amorous. Good night, folks. Thank you very good night. much. Thank you for touring the Tulsa Chapstick Exhibition with us. Hey, Anna Sarah. Oh, <laughs> well done, you guys. Oh my God, let's hear it up. Give it up for Kennison, for Robert, for Donna. You guys get on the screen with us. For EJ, for Amy, for Ben, you guys. That was oh, great. Sure. That was awesome. And to you guys hey. out there watching us, Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us, sharing our Friday night improv together. This was awesome. If you especially loved this show and us having guest performers on the BNG Improv Show, please put it in the comments, share it on our BNG Improv page. Let us know. We want to give you guys the shows that you want to see. Yeah. So again, one more time, thank you to all of our guest performers. Laurel, any final words? Gosh, um, yeah, make sure um, I, uh, if you want to see more, make sure to go to B and G Improv on the Facebook page. Just search that in there and then just like us and then we will 
not inundate you with show information, uh, but you'll you'll get to see what we're doing. And uh, you can also watch some of our past shows uh, that we, we were started there here in May. Uh, and our characters, the Patty sisters are on there. I could go on, but I'm not going to. I'm going to make you go do that right now, please. That'd be great. Okay. Great. All right. <laughs> and, thanks, uh, everybody. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.